if we die today, don't live forever. Live forever. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Preseason, a critical time of year for some positions much more than others. For wide receivers like this guy, for instance, so important to establish that timing and understanding you need to have with your quarterback before the season starts. It's the Packers going up against the Packers. Thank you very much. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League presented by EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Green Bay Packers and our home team. Welcome in, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. So you've got one week of preseason games in the books. Now you start to really assess some of the vets and, of course, some of the young players. You're exactly right because now is a week's worth of... Lutz now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6-4 quarterback. first run back to the line of scrimmage and that's it and this whole line it is the lifeblood of the offense they establish the tone mean nasty physical they can't wait to get after people that allows the rest of the offense to feel confident offense looking to avoid a third and long it's second and ten And to give this time to the tailback. He takes this for three to the 29. Now whistles here, and we've got a man down. Man down on the field. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. third down a nickel formation here defensively they'll set up a throw and this is going to be incomplete So now here in the second week of the preseason, you'd expect the starters play a little bit more than they did in week one, but not a whole lot. So if you're an offensive coordinator, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbook's probably installed. How well are they handling it?
Lutz now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out, a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that, that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. And a peek at the defense for the Packers. Ha ha, Clinton Dix has always had excellent ball skills as a free safety coming out of Alabama, but where I think he's made his best improvement, as a run defender, takes better angles to the ball, tackles better, but has not lost those ball skills that I talked about. Five interceptions in 2016, and went to his first Pro Bowl in his hometown of Orlando. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Going down the middle, and it's complete. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it, because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Looking to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Green 39. Green 39. They'll look to throw here on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan or he's just finding his way open. Yeah, maybe a little of both. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he will take this one in for a touchdown. 
Keith Mumphrey from 17 yards out. And his guys are an extra point away now from taking the lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Fourth down, here's Matt Bosher on the punt. Let's take it on the 25. It's a 47-yard punt, return of six. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Now this offense about ready to take over again. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 39. This is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah. Lutz now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action hit them over the top. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I've yet to meet a wide receiver who likes to block more than catching the football, but the best ones understand that that's how they'll actually get more passes thrown to them, and they help in the run game. And anytime you get a run of that yardage, that means the wide receivers did help. They get down to what a lot of people call the second level, the linebackers, or the third level where the defensive backs are, and they get out in front and put their bodies out there and create more space for their runners to gain the yardage. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now, it's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? Because, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason before they make the final cut. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys to learn for these games. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and nine. Hurry up, here we go. Blue Blue 
They'll drop to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And that one good for 16 yards and a first. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Going to give this time to the tailback. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And if you're the defense and those D tackles, you like that they're trying to run the football here against your 4-3, don't you? Yeah, because they tend to eat things up because they are so strong and physical, and especially when they play with leverage where they get lower than the offensive linemen and control them. And what I love about the good defensive tackles, they can play over the guards, they can slide and play over the center. Nobody in the offense likes that day when they have to deal with those guys. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards through the air and a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. down he'll drop to throw it and he's got his man on the out route and he works it to the 30 yard line here right at the 30. five yards on the catch there brings up second down an ex-teammate used to tell me all the time i hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what you really can't hide what you're doing and i think that right there he knew right away where the blitz was coming from where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Back to throw now on second and 10. And he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Great corner route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Matt Bosher now on for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. 
This will be fielded at the 17. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Pull out a 48-yard punt. Give him nine, though, on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. receivers especially the little guys like we're watching here are just quicker than fast a lot of them combine quickness and speed and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there against that 4-3 in that big line, aren't you? Yeah, and I don't really run it against a good 4-3 team that well because I've got to get those guys on the move a little bit. If you're a static running team, meaning you just want to run it in the middle, you may have some trouble against good defensive tackles. That's what we just saw in that play. No gain. He'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. there down to the 37. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference as we know between second and four and second and eight and nine. going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. to the 33. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Tight end to the right, boy. Tight end to the right. Move. Hurry up. Here we go. Blue line. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. A minute 59 to go in the first half. We'll come back here right after this. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. The offense on third down tonight, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and 11. Let's go! He'll drop to throw. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it.
gone final in Indianapolis. And it was the Vikings able to take home the victory. Dalvin Cook, two touchdowns on the ground to help lead the way. Well, Charles, a game and a decision that people may be talking about tomorrow for sure. Had a chance at a long field goal there at the end to try and tie it. They elect to not kick it, and they lose the game. And I think what we'd all love to see is that little slip of paper that the special teams coach handed to head coach before the game that said, this is where our kicker is good from the deck. This is where he feels confident because that might be the absolute mark that tells us, okay, maybe we have to run more offense because maybe he doesn't feel good about kicking it from this distance. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say good night, everybody.